people on the outside. Not talking about the people at the city council meeting in Rifle or Grand Junction or Parachute or wherever it might be. It's talking about a body of believers and how we should relate to one another. Number two, he says, we will be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Let's look at, at Romans chapter 12, verse 10 for just a moment. Romans 12, 10. Be devoted. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Now, you might say, what kind of brotherly love is he talking about? <laughs> I've seen some brothers and some sisters and brothers that fought like cats and dogs. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about in brotherly love like Christian brotherly love with all the uniqueness that we have in us as Christ's Spirit comes and indwells us as believers, that needs to make a change. That needs to make a difference in us. We need to act differently than we used to before the Spirit came in, before we were born again and became a part of Christ's kingdom. And we need to be devoted to one another. This verse carries the meaning of reciprocal love, one toward another within the body of Christ. Reciprocal love and, and mutual love and, and, and devoted love. You know, I praise God for my wife. Maybe she needs to just close her ears not to be embarrassed. I praise God for my wife. She's been my wife for 45 years. I've never seen anyone more devoted to anyone than she's been to me. Oh, I watched it in my mom and dad for 59 years when they were, till my dad died. I watched that devotion. That means there is a, a commitment, a bonding together. And this verse carries that meaning, saying that uh, we'll be devoted to each other. We'll accept the warts on the skin. We'll accept the fact that their personalities aren't the same in the body of Christ. We'll be willing to accept that for His glory and for His honor because the unique relationship in the church is different. Like members of a family. A good model family. Not a dysfunctional family. A good family. A family where people are working hard together and supporting one another together and where their strengths and weaknesses are complemented one by another. That's the family of God. And that's what he says we should be like. We will honor one another above ourselves. Same verse, Romans 12.10. You know, the part of verse 10, one part of it carries the thought of giving precedence to the other person, showing honor and respect one toward another. I, one of the best books that I've read, I, I love to read sports books, you know, stuff about sports, especially if it's about football or baseball. Uh, and we won't go there this morning, okay, because I'll get in trouble if I do baseball. Or I'm yelling for the wrong team, I guess. But uh, you, don't want, you don't want to get in trouble for yelling for the wrong team. Better yell for my team. You know, see, that's how it goes. But uh, one of the best books I've read was a book by Gail Sayers, who was a, uh, uh, wow, all-conference all football player at Kansas years and years ago. I mean, before most younger people were even born. And, and, and he played for seven years for the Chicago Bears, the professional football player. And, and then after he retired, he wrote this book, and, and, and the title of the book is, I'm third. I am third. God is first. Others are second. And I'm third. And that's what he's talking about here in this passage of Scripture. We give precedence one to another. Now, it's not easy for us to do because each of us down deep inside in that nature that God is in the process of transforming and that one day we'll look more like Him, but each one of us is a little bit selfish, are we not? That's kind of who we are down deep inside. But it says 
We'll give precedence one to another, honoring and respecting one another within the body of Christ. Number four, we'll live in harmony with one another. Romans chapter 12, verse 16, be of the same mind. That's what this is talking about. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation of yourself. Uh, I like this particular Amplified Bible translation of that. It says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. That means snobbish, high-minded, or act exclusive one toward another. But readily adjust yourself to people or circumstances and give yourself to humble tasks. Are you willing to do the humble task in a church? You know, sometimes that means cleaning the carpet, but it could mean also, you know, I was talking with Jeff. I'm going to pick on Jeff this morning. I was talking with Jeff, and I blew it, and I made a mistake. That means I need to go to him in humility and say, Jeff, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I've confessed my sin to God, and I'm asking your forgiveness. And that's not easy, is it? But it's important for a family to truly be the kind of family that God wants his family to be. And it's possible because he gives us his spirit. See, without God living in me, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't do that. But with God's spirit indwelling me as a believer, it's possible because nothing is impossible to God. And so he draws us together in harmony. Never overestimate yourself or be wise in your own conceits. That's part of that Amplified Bible translation of Romans 12, 16. Real easy to overestimate yourself, isn't it? You know, to think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Any one of us can do that from time to time. Can we not? But don't do that. When you begin to feel that way about yourself, I'm not talking about feeling good about yourself. When we do good, we ought to feel good about ourselves, should we not? God's Word never says we shouldn't. But I'm talking about feeling too good about yourself. That's what I mean, too good. Placing yourself on a higher plane than you really are. Maybe the plane that you're placing yourself on is really reserved only for God. And it's wrong. So don't think too highly of yourself. That's what he's saying. Number next, he says, we will not criticize one another. Then let us no more criticize and blame and pass judgment on one another. This is the Amplified Bible. But rather decide and endeavor never to put a stumbling block or an obstacle or a hindrance in the way of a brother. I should walk my Christian life with the full intention of never permitting myself or something that I do or say to become a stumbling block. That means something that stops someone from growing, from continuing in their Christian growth. I should never allow myself, regardless of what it is in my life, to cause a brother or sister to stumble. Now, when that happens, and it will, because we're not perfect, are we? But we're saved sinners. And so therefore, what can we do? We can go to Him. 1 John 1, 9 tells us that if we confess our sin, that He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And He'll do that. He keeps His promises. We're singing about Jesus promises. Jesus keeps his promises. He'll do exactly what he says he'll do. He says, then let us no more criticize and blame and pass judgment upon one another. See, when we're being hypercritical one of another within the church, that's what we're doing. We're passing judgment on somebody else. And the Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. I mean, I don't like to be judged falsely. Do you? None of us do. Therefore, 
We need to make sure that we don't judge other people. I kind of like the way that uh, the old Indian saying, Native American, I should say, saying went. My uncle was uh, Native American. And uh, don't judge someone until you've walked a mile in their moccasins. Pretty good saying for anybody, any ethnic group, in any age, any generation. Pretty good saying. Good for the church. Judge not, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Judge not that you be not judged. Next page. Give you a little humor here in the midst of this. We need some humor in this, right? Right here, right now. It's a good time for a good laugh. I applied these to my life first. I did not find them extremely comfortable in my own life. It reminded me that I need to go back to the book, this book, and I need to daily, again, anew and afresh, apply these truths to my daily walk. Because you see, it's real easy as we walk in this world to get caught up in the world, is it not? And to begin to do things the way the world does things. And what this is saying, God's words clearly says, we're different from the world. We're going to relate to one another in a different way within the body of Christ, within the bride of Christ, within the church, than the way the average citizen on the street relates to himself or to one another. It says verse, page 2 at the top, we'll be peacemakers. Well, I say page 2. That's page 2 for me. That's not page 2 for you. Okay. There, there's some humor right there. Okay. My computer makes mistakes, right? It put it on page 2 and it's page 1. Okay. We'll be peacemakers and mutually build up one another. That's found, the concept of that is found in Romans 14. Chapter 14, verse 19. And, and what does it say? So then, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the building up of one another. Wow. That means the edification of the body of Christ because one, within one another, we're related within this body. The ESV says, so then let us eagerly pursue. The word eagerly that means do it with some kind of uh, zest and excitement, right? Let us eagerly pursue what makes for peace and harmony and for mutual upbuilding, mutual edification. It's not just that I try to build up my brother. It's that brothers and sisters in the body build up one another that we find good things to say about one another or encouraging things to say about one another and that we practice that as a part of our daily life. I'm not talking about false flattery. I'm not telling, talking about telling a 66-year-old man that he looks like he's 19. I know better. <laughs> you know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about encouragement. We all walk difficult paths, don't we? We all face difficulty, and we need to walk alongside of one another. Like Psalm 23 says, he walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. He does. We need to walk beside one another, not with a critical spirit or judgmental spirit, but with the idea of edification or building up one another and letting the other person know that you're there with them that you too understand. You may not be walking in the exact path they're walking in with them, but that you've been through some difficult things and you can relate to them because of where you've walked and because of the insight that the Holy Spirit of God gives because He indwells you. He lives inside of you. Number next, we will be accepting one toward another. Romans 15, 7. <clears throat> 